Hello, this is Bertrand. I'll be talking today about the Scribus generator, which is a mail merge extension to Scribus to create good looking PDFs uh, quite automatically from external data, like in a spreadsheet. So, the, the website online at uh, GitHub provides you with, I hope, interesting documentation. This is just a complementary screencast uh, in which we'll simply create a business card uh, and feed, create quite a few business cards. Uh, and feed their content from uh, a spreadsheet in a uh, calc open source software. Uh, so I'll just create a, a new blank template here and show you how you can then replace uh, the various placeholders um, of, of data with variables. So you just rename uh, each section that you'd like to rename with a var underscore and then the name of a field for data. So in my business card I want a name I want a position position uh, the email should change accordingly as well var in upper case email percentage um, that's about it so that is for, for the very simple uh, way to start the things will now uh, create a data file so I will save this uh, file uh, as um, in any any working place that you'd like so this is now my business card saved and I will now create a data file using calc which is open source um, Excel replacement you can use any editor you'd like as long as it's able to edit CSV file uh, for which calc is quite fine. So we said we wanted a name, a position, and an email uh, information. First guy is going to be John Doe, his director at our company, and his email is simply John. Uh, we have um, Jane Smith, she's director too, uh, and can be contacted at, by email at Jane. And then we have Edward Graham. Uh, who is assistant actually uh, and you can call him Ed. So you just save this data as um, a classical comma separated text text CSV comma separated the default settings are quite fine um, since Python is able to parse them easily you usually don't have to care about this as long as you use um, LibreOffice or uh, Apache OpenOffice uh, Excel might lead you to some trouble so just check it out and name this file in the name that is uh, that does make sense to you I recommend saving in same place as your uh, um, original there we go original um, Scribus file so now in my uh, project folder I have this business card SLA Scribus file and the data in CSV. Now we just run the script to see how we install it please it's a simple download and then you can run the script execute it from the script menu in Scribus find where you are where you've look, downloaded it uh, and you just run the Scribus generator dot uh, pi file this will open up a dialog where you have to actually choose all of the, the elements so back finding the I was in the uh, finding your local project I was in example this is my uh, Scribus file and then feed him the data you can simply copy paste the path it saves a bit of time there we go with the data Output directory, if you leave it empty, it goes for home. Uh, let's just not waste any time. And we want to now generate PDFs of it. This is now, as you can see, uh, in the file already has generated three uh, Scribus file applying our data um, and for to generate diff three different uh, entries for business card because we had three lines and what Scribus is now taking some time to do is open each of these Scribus file to generate a PDF since we asked for a setting to have an output format in PDF. 
If you would have chosen another format like Scribus, I'll show you later, the generation would have been much farther, faster, sorry, because actually generating the PDFs out of the Scribus file takes uh, a bit longer. But there we go, the, the first credit card is there, and it should be for our John uh, Doe director. Let me check it out quickly. There we go. So this is for John Doe director, and as you see, his email has been correctly transformed as well. And in the meanwhile, our second business card is there too. And this should be for Jane Smith. She was directed to, and the email is correctly changed. And the third PDF, yeah, should come how anytime soon. So while it generates the last PDF, let me please get back to the documentation to show you that much more can be done. Um, you can actually as well include pictures, so we'll see about that in a, in a second, um, so that you have dynamic images in, included into your, your templates, and it can go much faster, you can play with colors or with positions, with the colors, so if you want to stick to the simple version, that's it, simple mail merge, now we'll go a bit more further and see a bit with images and uh, more advanced elements. To add images, I first downloaded some vector art from the web. Uh, Scribus can handle many formats, and the Scribus generator does not add any or, or impose on any. As long as it's supported by Scribus, you can use it. So now I'll do my data, I will add uh, the relevant information and add a logo column so that I will be able to use it there as a variable in the template. John wants to get a sun, uh, Jane wants the moon, and Ed is more into. Uh, body parts, uh, whatever that means. So I'll save this data and now use the logo variable because on the first column these are my variable names uh, in my Scribus template. Don't forget to save. And now to Scribus. Yep, not that one, sorry. There we go. So I simply add an image field and pick the target. Uh, Pick whichever you want, it's just for the layout, the variable, with the, the image will be substituted anyway. Um, it doesn't show because it's maybe not to the right scale or whatever, so let's check the properties and make sure that for the images it exactly scale and it keeps proportional, otherwise uh, it's quite uh, often does not look good, especially if you have images of different sizes. So scale to, to frame. Uh, the size of the frame and this looks much better. Um, well, this is perfect. Now what we want is to have it displayed well, so you can play a bit along uh, with the, um, the positioning as well. Uh, change its its position with a control home or end. This looks like a nice place to have logo displayed. And then we change this particular image, which is the sun, into the right variable name so that it gets dynamically replaced. So you change the get image and replace, simply remain in the same um, folder and replace the name with the uh, variable name var logo. It's as simple as that. Now, of course, the image doesn't display any longer, but that's perfectly fine. You see exactly what it will be replaced with. That is now safe. We can go a bit further than this. Uh, I told you this is for images. Now, let's play a bit with colors. Uh, as you may know, uh, the document has its own model for colors, which you can actually uh, display in the Edit menu, Edit Colors. So these are the act colors, uh, quite a few blue ones, let's rename them so that it's much more understandable. This is blue one. And I'll check, like, let's say, make different schemes for three. This is blue three, which is the brightest, and somewhere in between we have a blue two. Um, okay, so what I will now do is I'll create another scheme of color in the origins, for instance. Let's say that uh, the assistants, the assistant, uh, have another color in this company. So I'll create another scheme in the uh, oranges, some very darker orange as my basic orange one, another orange. in the mid, and a very light one, uh, orange 3, which must... Well, 
So we have now two schemes, a blue scheme and an orange scheme. What is now important is that we use actually variable names uh, to take place. Uh, so to do this I usually do one scheme of colors that uh, is really uh, striking so you know so I'll do a pink uh, to say okay this is my variables so we have three uh, I, I'll go with the scheme of three colors so this is my var for um, the darkest color and so I need three placeholders because my schemes my scheming is for three far color two always the same um, convention to have var in upper scale and then the name of the actual variable in the in the sorry the, the actual field in placeholders um, and this is a very light one okay and now if I use these colors in the actual template business card okay uh, you'll see very quickly how let's change the colors of this element so this becomes the dark one this will be in the very clear an average uh, dark and a light and now these uh, pink shades will be actually replaced by add the blue scheme or the orange scheme in the PDF data. Of course you can use how many schemes you like, even keep these ones, but my purpose is to show a bit how you can use dynamic colors as well. So let's just save it like that, save and add now three fields we require, the color in the data. So back to the Excel, I said I would have three colors, color one, two and three. How funny uh, and that the directors would have blue cards so blue one blue two blue three for both of them while the other guy was in the oranges orange one orange two and orange three that should work so now we save it I'll be back to Scribus and this time to be a little bit faster I'm just not going to generate the PDFs have you seen it takes a bit of time so I'll delete all of the working files and simply generate the Scribus file this goes much faster as you'll see since we've now run the script already it's available in recent scripts it goes much faster to find it there and you can as well get it back uh, directly here so you feed the Scribus source file you feed the data and you select the output directory. This time I will not generate PDFs but just the scribus because this goes faster and boom it's done. So let's open the first. This is the first uh, business card for the John Doe in the blues with his image and let's go to Ed the assistant. He should have a foot and an orange card and then there we go. Um, as easy as that. Oh, next time we'll change the color of that text as well and then of course uh, go even a bit further into the advanced features so Jane Smith uh, will do a bit more customization for that particular card changing the font and changing the size so that you see that many other things can become dynamic but this is already a pretty good example now to more advanced features uh, if you go back to the documentation you see that actually you can replace any attribute in the um, in the Scribus file using some code XPath actually. Uh, the source file of Scribus is actually an XML so um, we can for instance decide to change the font attribute of a text element using more advanced features and this is what I will illustrate now. So back to our Scribus template I just shut down the generated cards and get back to the template. Um, that's it. the window of the of the generator so now here in template what we would like is to change uh, the font of that or to make at least make actually the font of the um, uh, the name dynamic so let me just click on it to, to be able to change it so click on the exact element and then uh, its properties or F2 it's exactly the same oh, we said we would change the color so this happens in the color item here 
and I want to have the darkest one of the oops, sorry, that's the color of the background box. I don't want to change this. I want to change the color of the text. So the color of the text is right here and the text colors. And I want this color to become a dynamic and use the darkest of the current scheme. Um, that's for the text. Now I want to change the font as well. And this becomes a bit more interesting. So by default is Arial, but I want for uh, Jane to be a very nice font. Uh, whatever you have installed should work. So I'll just go for uh, Princess Sophia. Yeah, it looks fun. So that's the one that will be used, uh, but just for her particular card. So just remember the name, Princess Sophia, in the regular variant. It's important to remember, but we will not save it here. So I just do a Control Z to cancel my last uh, change. Uh, correct the alignment, sorry, because it messed it up. There we go. So Princess Sophia regular is what is of interest to me. And to add a more advanced feature, uh, it needs to be added as an attribute. So I will just add an attribute to that box and say, please add an attribute that changes the font. And you, you add here the name of the attribute you'd like to change. We'll see where to find it. Uh, every type is an actually a scribus generator attribute. That's a static way for the script to um, remember what it needs to uh, replace. And the value is actually the name of your variable. So in my case, it's going to be font. We will add this into the data file in a second. And parameter I will explain in a second, but I want this font attribute to be replaced for any I text that is a children of this box. So to get more thorough comprehension of this line, you actually need to dig a little bit into the documentation of Scribus. So back to the website, if you click here on the um, elements of the reference and object properties, it will bring you to the page of the file specification format where you can actually find for the Scribus document the exact structure or you can look at the source file. It is beyond the scope of this a very short screencast to explain the, 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 the syntax of the document. But basically, the idea is that uh, you can specify the name of an attribute in the XML, and this is the XPath predicate uh, that will apply us or explain where to substitute the actual value. So the actual what this line means is that from the current element, every font attribute of uh, children iText, which is the second, so the second line of iText actually, will have a new attribute font set. Here we would do not want to change uh, just a single line, but all of the lines. And so for this particular attribute, I don't say, hey, just take a particular iText. This would change only the first line, so her name. I want the position change as well, so I just say, take them all. That's okay that way. Um, now we will just save. Uh, another advanced feature that you could use, for instance, is actually anything in the code. So we could as well change the position of this element here and say, OK, we go for that Y position, which is around 30, uh, 34, uh, or it can go way above around the 7. This is uh, this attribute is called GPOS, uh, sorry, y, y pos for uh, the position along the Y axis. So we'll do exactly that. We'll add an attribute on this to say, okay, I want to change the Y pos attribute. Uh, the type is always a scribus generator attribute. The value in this case is another variable that I will have to add to my data. It's going to be let's say called top. Um, no parameter is needed here because it does not need to be applied to any children of this element. It's a direct attribute of that element. Now to the data. We just added an info element of a font and of a top position. So for the font, uh, this stays Arial regular. For the guys. And uh, the girl gets a very nice princess. Sophia regular. Whereas for the top, um, you may just want to edit it in Scribus, save the file and, and look at the source code to, to look at exactly where the position actually sends. Uh, but I think that this kind of numbers should look fine. We'll see a bit uh, how that goes um, soon. Uh, but for former test, I think this looks okay. So 22 for the boys and like around 40 for the girls so that the waves moves a bit upwards. Uh, I'll just save the data and uh, run the thing. So 
save the business card with the attributes now included. I just removed a few things we generated a few seconds ago and run the script again from Scribus, script, recent scripts, and uh, give him, feed him with the same information. So my Scribus file, my data file, and please run it as Scribus, it's much faster. Here we go. Uh, sorry, I forgot to put the output directory, so need to update this, generate. There we go for the three. Let's first check if the boys are alright. So, seems okay. The wave moved up, so maybe my, my in figures were in, involved, but at least you see that it works. And for the girl, the wave is down, as you can see, it's much down that the boys. And the font changed, which is fun. Uh, this is Princess Sophia look, and uh, so the last uh, card should actually be a bit of orange and uh, with the, the features of a, of, of a mail card, so uh, the higher wave, um, well, whatever. I leave it to you, you can think of many variants, play with, with all of it, enjoy it, uh, and just know that if you generate PDFs, it just takes longer, sorry for this, uh, this is uh, so far uh, a bit of the, the weak part of this script, so I'll try to find a way uh, to, to fix this, but I hope you like it, and I thank you for your attention, bye.